Welcome back to part two of my Sailor Moon piece where I'm going to color the background. In part one you saw me color Sailor Moon and now we're going to get start right in on the background. You can see um, where I traced a very light pencil line um, using a circle stencil um, and that's going to be the full moon behind her. I looked up some full moon reference pictures online just so I could kind of get an idea of crater placement, you know, what the craters look like in the full moon in the night sky. And I'm just kind of using my um, cool gray 2 marker to just create some dark gray areas that basically are just going to hint at, at the dark areas in the moon. I don't want to fill in all the space because there's also quite a bit of um, the moon that is bright and white and silvery. Now I'm using uh, my Cool Gray Zero to just kind of blend um, so that um, the gray areas don't look quite so harsh and sloppy. I want them to look soft so that the overall effect is kind of a silvery glow. So I'm blending, and again, still leaving lots of white within the circle of the moon. And once I've um, gotten that blended, I'm going to come back with just um, a really light, light blue. I think that's B000 just to add a little bit of blue in there. Now I'm going to go around the um, edge of the moon um, to kind of give it a glow. And I'm starting with a really, really pale um, blue. I think that's BG000. And I'm going all the way around, which is tricky because I'm I don't want to I'm leaving um, the white outline around Sailor Moon herself, so I'm, I'm being careful to um, watch those edges. And I'm trying to stay close to my pencil guide there so that I have a nice, um, clean circle there. Now I'm going to come in with a, um, I'm erasing the pencil line real quick. If you color over pencil lines with um, the, the Copic markers, pencil lines will stay permanently and I didn't want them to show so um, I erased them once I felt like um, I had the moon outlined well enough. Now I'm coming in with um, B00 and I'm leaving some of the real light blue close to the moon, but I'm going to darken that glow as it goes outward. And I'm going to do the same thing with the B02. And this time I'm, I'm leaving the, um, making the B02 a little bit thicker because I'm going to blend that into the color I'm going to use for the night sky. And I'm using the light shade um, just to blend all those colors together so there's a nice smooth blend there. Just going to clean up a couple areas on the bottom there. And now I'm starting into the night sky. The darkest color I'm using closest to the moon. And um, that shade is B57. Or actually I think it's BG57. It's kind of a teal color. And that's going to be um, the majority of the sky is going to be this color. I 
kind of follow the circle of the moon um, just to with my strokes because um, that's just the easiest way to keep keep it all even and I'm laying lots of ink in there because I want it to be nice and dark Probably need to buy a refill for that marker now. <laughs> Once I got to this point, I decided I wanted to um, put an edge around the piece. So um, I've got pencil lines in there now that um, leave about a half inch um, edge around the, the edge of the paper. And then you'll see me start to um, go along those lines. And as I get outward, um, I'm going to blend in some lighter pastel colors to the um, in the corners. So now I'm starting to leave um, more um, the brush marks, and I'm leaving it lighter because I'm going to blend other colors in there. My first blending color is um, a BG53, which is just a lighter shade of um, roughly the same tone that I use for the dark parts. So I'm going in there and just blending um, those strokes in. So the strokes themselves are a little less obvious. Um, I don't want them to be totally noticeable so that they're distracting. And again, I'm, I'm even leaving these parts um, fairly light in terms of um, the ink. I'm, I'm not going over it a ton because I'm going to blend even more colors in there. And here I'm just filling in again to um, kind of blend the, the brush strokes so that you can't see them quite as well. Now I'm going to switch to um, B32, I think, and um, it's just a real pretty light blue. That's I'm going to blend outward. Sorry, some of this ends up being out of the frame, but I'm blending into the corners. I'm, I still have in mind that I want to use two more shades, kind of a, a purple and then a, a violet that's um, on towards pink in the corners. So I'm leaving space for those colors. I just want just a hint to kind of give it a nice pastel feel. There's that purple that I'm going to bring in. I like to use more ink over top of other colors because that's how you get the really good blends. And it's one thing I love about Copic markers so much is um, they're really blendable. Even if you start with a color that you decide you don't like so much, you can change that by just sinking a lot of ink of a different color into that. And um, Usually it works out. Um, I've, I've never had anything turn out totally muddy and awful. I feel like um, pretty much everything is nice and fixable with Copics because they blend so well together. Now I'm going into the bottom corners with that pink, which you can't see here, but if you go to my website, you can see the, fine, the finished piece. 
using a, a purple to um, add some cool shadows to Sailor Moon since she is, you know, against a night sky. And I decided I needed to blend a few more areas in here. On the finished piece, um, which is not in this video, I also use a, um, I add some stars to the sky using a gel pen, and then I I went even went over those with a shimmery watercolor to add just a little shimmer both to the moon and the the night sky. And last, I'm going to come in with my white gel pen, clean up some of the edging around Sailor Moon herself, and add um, catch lights to her eyes and the, the metal parts, her um, headband and um, her hair ties and such. And that's it. I invite you to visit my website and check out the final piece in the artwork section. And tune in next time. Thanks so much for watching.